Well, hey there again, fans, friends, and followers. Dave Turner here, and today we're working on the 1966 Chrysler Newport, and we're gonna talk about the ammeter bypass, or the alternator gauge bypass that lots of people with old Chrysler products uh, perform in their cars for a little bit of extra safety. Uh, just for a reminder, I'm not an electrician, I'm not an electrical theorist or anything like that, so if I use the wrong terms or words, just drop a comment below and, and give me a correction on that. Uh, I know just enough about this stuff to be dangerous. So anyhow, to do the ammeter bypass, there's quite a number of ways to do it. I saw one way where you went under the dash and you clipped some wires from the alternator gauge and you made a new hole in the bulkhead uh, connection that's uh, right down in there and you pass some new wires through, all kinds of crazy stuff under the dash and behind the instrument cluster. The way I did it is much easier, so I'm just going to walk you through that really quick here. So let's start over at the alternator. <clears throat> and on the back of the alternator, you can see there's the main wire there. Let's see. Oh, there it is. And I've added a second wire. It's a 10 gauge red wire here. And I think I paid probably 10 or $11 for this 10 foot length of 10 gauge wire. So it's pretty beefy. And it's, you know, moderately expensive for what you get. You get about 10 feet. But this wire just goes along and it, let's see, there's my finger. And it goes along the valve cover. It goes along, it comes up here. And then I kind of snake it across to the other side with some of the other wires and things that are going that direction. Uh, if you're curious, that blue wire is the, coming from the ballast resistor to go to my uh, Rev 7500 electronic ignition. But anyway, well, so let's come over to the other side here. So we come around and we got this red wire and it's coming down and it's going to a fusible link. Where's my finger? There it is. A fusible link. And boy, wouldn't you know it, I forgot what gauge fusible link it's supposed to be. But uh, I'll read it. What does it say? It says, oh, it doesn't say. Anyway, I forgot what the gauge is, a fusible link. It's slight, oh, it's 14 gauge. So we've got a 10 gauge wire and a 14 gauge fusible link. And I actually have two of these because one's uh, coming from the bulkhead uh, as a previous repair that a previous owner did. So we've got one coming here and then the one coming from the alternator right here also has a 14 gauge fusible link. And that plugs into your starter relay. Now, if you're familiar with Chrysler products, you know that the starter relay is getting uh, juice right from the positive terminal of the battery. So let's go over this way. So here's our battery. Here's our positive terminal. And we got this very heavy black wire right here. And that's going right back along and it works its way over to the starter relay right in here. <clears throat> so what this effect effectively does is it connects <clears throat> the output of the alternator directly to the battery via the starter relay. Now what that does for us is that takes a lot of electrical load off of the alternator gauge inside the car. Uh, the standard way that the Chrysler products operate is that that alternator current is going to the alternator gauge inside the car first, takes a reading, and then it gets distributed to the rest of the car. And later in the, in the late 60s or early 70s, in some of the Dodge trucks, there was reports of that gauge failing and it catching fire and the car going up in smoke. And so many people decided just to bypass that altogether. If you have a police car from that era, they come with that bypassed from the factory. So they, Chrysler was aware that this was a problem and they had to do something about it. So what we've done now is we've taken all that load from the instrument cluster and we've taken it instead over here and via the starter relay, we've connected it directly to the battery. So let's start up the car and see what that looks like on the gauge. So here we are in the car, and the car is cold. I did start it up to move it 
to a different spot here on the driveway, but it's basically still cold. So we'll probably be on the choke a little bit, or maybe it'll just run a little bit crappy as it warms up. But here's our alternator gauge, as you can see right now, maybe, there we go. It's uh, straight up center on the gauge here. So let's go ahead and start it up. A little cold. And the gas gauge decided to take a day off, okay. Now you can see, maybe, there we go, that the alternator gauge is showing a discharge. Not a lot, but a little bit. <clears throat> but if we come over here to my voltmeter, we're showing 14 volts. So the alternator is putting out the full 14 volts. It's getting to the battery. Life is good. Everything is fine. We just noticed that there's a bit of a discharge on the gauge. That's because we're having less current go through this gauge than before. So that increases the safety of, uh, the, of the car by eliminating a risk of a failure point with that gauge. So let's turn the lights on and see what that does. Now we're about maybe a third discharged, just a little bit. Uh, let's turn on the heater. That should put a load on there. Yeah, and that put quite a load on. You can see now we're discharging about halfway through, so that might be minus 15. But over here on the voltmeter, we're still at 14 volts. So the ammeter bypass is bypassing the gauge, but it's still delivering all the current we need to the battery. And the charging system is working as expected. <clears throat> Let's turn on the headlights. Let's turn on the brights. There we go. Now we're really drawing. Let's turn on the heater. So now we're even more than 15 amps discharging on the alternator gauge. But over here, we're at about 12 and a half, 12 and a quarter volts. So a little bit more of a draw, but we're still getting the full 12 volts to the battery, even with the brights on, the headlights on, and the heater on. <clears throat> all right, well, if you have any comments or questions or corrections for me about how all this stuff works, please leave a comment down below and leave your suggestions for other videos you'd like to see about upgrades or improvements I've done to my 1966 Chrysler Newport. Look at that, the cold light turned off all by itself. All right, take care. Thanks for watching.